Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, second chapter. We have a ton of cutscenes today, so uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the uh, popcorn, because here we go. Adios, that was one heck of a trip. If it's much further, I think my legs are going to pop off. Well, you can relax now. This is the lowest floor of the sealed area. Wait, really? Ah, oh, thank the goddess. If you told me we were only halfway down, I think I'd be floating off to meet her right about now. Really, Father Kevin? You're being a little too humble. I can tell you're extremely well trained for a priest. If you were not, I doubt you could do the job that you do. Ah, oh, kazing, read like a book, children's book of that. Well, it's no big deal if you figured it out. We're close to the Von Osleys family anyway. Oh, speaking of my job, that thing the mayor of Rouen had. Oh, the Kronos Rod. In accordance with our pact, it's being kept safely secure using the prescribed methods. We can hand it off to you whenever you wish. Perfect, perfect, thanks. So, anyway, the thing that we discussed earlier, mind showing it to me, is down here, right? Yes, follow me. Julia is uh, Chloe's teacher. Chloe's the princess of uh, Rouen, and that's the Von Oslace family. It's Chloe Von Oslace, so that's the royal family. Well now, would you look at this? I imagine even the church will have difficulty deciding on what to do with this, yes? This sort of artifact isn't so much big as it is gargantuan. You mind if I take a closer look? As you like. The Queen's given her permission. Please, if you understand any of this, share your thoughts. So this is the Ring Guardian that was in the report, huh? It's kind of similar to the robot excavated in Calvert, but uh... I wish you could see them moving. And this... An artifact from the last years of the ancient Zemurian civilization, at least 1200 years old. It's clearly the core of the structure, but there's no clear indication as to what it actually does. Analysis of artifacts seems to be impossible with modern tools. They work on the same principle and energy as an orbit, but their internal structure is entirely different from an orbit. That's what Professor Russell holds, at least. The church refers to these as gifts from the goddess given too early. And over here is... So, just after the black orb you called the Gospel was used, all the giant pillars that were in here were set into the floor? Yeah, all four pillars set into the floor like this one. Even two months later, we're not even sure what it means, if anything. Okay, so... A seal in the auroral, a gospel was used, and then the device in here spoke of device towers and a second barrier. And I think I'm starting to see what kind of system is at work here. System? What system? There's nothing else here. Well, call it a gut instinct at this point, but I think this was some, some sort of gate. Gate? Call it a gate on the trail that leads to the goddess's treasure. And the thing that opens it is a black key called a gospel. If you think about it like that, the auroral being a wall makes a lot of sense. But where's this trail of yours then? This is the lowest floor. According to the professor, the ruins extend no further. Uh, think a little less literally. It's not a trail you see with your eyes or you normally walk. It could be the septium veins that run through the earth. Or maybe it's some route that we can't even imagine. But that's where we'll find a clue that will lead us to the auroral. Hmm. They were in the uh, final dungeon of the last game. And here we are, Chapter 1, Sneaking Shadows. an airship for over half a day is kind of tiring, huh? I know how to stretch her legs, though. Let's go report the completion of her training and duty readiness. Estelle, hello? Oh, yeah, you're right. We should go say hi to Ellen. Hey, are you... Estelle, you've got a case of the nerves, don't you? Yeah, I do. I don't know why, either. I didn't feel this way at all before I went to training, but now, somehow, thinking that I'm really going to be a full bracer now is making me really, really antsy. Heh, <laughs> I get it 
trembling with excitement, I bet. You've grown way, way stronger over this past month, Estelle. And not just in, like, the whacking stuff with the stick department. You're more knowledgeable, careful, and you make better judgments. And now you're about to start hunting down the mystery creepers who want to doom us all or whatever, and you're going to bring Joshua back. I bet all that's only just sinking in for you now. Yeah, well, when you put it that way, I guess that is how I'm feeling. I'm such a dimwit. I'm like a mountain climber who didn't even bother looking up at how big the mountain before her is. Having second thoughts about climbing it? No way! If anything, I'm even more fired up now than I used to be. No matter how big a mountain is, you can only climb it up one step at a time anyway. Even if I have to crawl, I'll reach the top no matter what. Ha! <laughs> that's more like it. Gonna head over to the guild? Sure. I see. The both of you have done well. Well, then here's your reward based on your performance during training. We get paid for training. Uh, not that I'll complain, but are you sure? Naturally. It's part of your job, after all. It won't be a problem so long as you put your new skills to good use for the guild. Huh, right, I'll do my best. Okay. Okay, got payment. What do we got? Ooh, 14 BP. And, uh, let's see, 2,000 Mira. Nice. Ooh, G plus rank. Sweet. Ooh, and an accessory. Hey, awesome. It does seem like you two had a quite fulfilling training period. You even carry yourselves differently. It was, I learned a lot. If I ever get the chance, I'd love to go again. <laughs> Glad to hear. Speaking of which, Kurt and the others remain at the training grounds, correct? Yeah, Karna and Gramps are doing some expert level stuff, I think. They said they won't be back for a while. I think I get what Elnan is poking at, though. The guild's down three full skilled bracers now. We'll be really busy from here on. On top of that, Cassius is still devoting all his time to the military, right? Yeah. If I remember right, he's currently working out of Liston Fortress. Okay, so he's been welcomed back to the army and is now the head of the military command. He's essentially the head of Her Majesty's Royal Army at this point. What? He's head of the army now? I thought General Morgan had that position. As I understand it, that was the original idea, but Morgan himself proposed giving Cassius full reign. He seems to be entrusting the future of the army to your father, Estelle. The future? Trusted a dad? Eh, well, we're doomed then. Ah, well, I guess I see Cassie as being given that much responsibility, you know? That's gonna mean we're down our ass rank hero, too, though. I think it's safe to say we'll have plenty of support from the military from now on. However, at the same time, we have new threats to concern ourselves with. Right, you mean the society? Did they start to do stuff while we were away? No, they've done nothing obvious, but that is, admittedly, how they work. What has happened are several strange occurrences over the past month. One example would be the changes in the wild beasts and the monsters in various regions. The monsters are changed. Uh, do you mind defining change? I hope it isn't what I think it is. To start with, heretofore undocumented types of monsters are showing up all across the country. Even the existing monsters have become far more vicious and powerful. Travel has become significantly more dangerous. No one's been able to put forward an explanation as to why this is happening. So, every beastie out there is nastier just because? Oh man. It's definitely the side he's doing. They're trying to turn us all into monster kibble. Calm yourself, Onlace. We still don't have enough evidence to be certain of anything. We do know one thing, though. Things definitely began happening after the Queen's birthday celebrations. We know that for certain. The first reports came in practically the day after. Oh, crap. Don't look so glum. We've actually been formulating a response of sorts. And I'd very much like for the two of you to be a part of it. A response? Ah, you two are here already. I wanted to meet you at the port. Shara, and a gate too. This is a surprise. Welcome back, you two. It's good to see you. <laughs> two got back sooner than I thought. Really happy to see you too, Shara. And Agate, hi. It's been a while, huh? Yeah, I think the last time we saw each other was during the Queen's birthday shindig. The old man told me about Joshua, you know. I heard you were pretty broken up over it, but you seem back on your feet already, yeah? Eh, yeah, mostly. More to the point, though. Why are you two together? Good question. I should get a camera. This is like seeing a king penguin. Oh, really? It isn't that rare, you know. Gotta admit, we don't work together that often, Sherizard. Actually, Sherizard and Agate are here to begin a special mission. I asked them to come here today for a specific reason. A mission? Indeed. They'll be tasked with investigating the Society of Ouroboros. What?! Wait, like chasing down their agents and stuff? Isn't that dangerous? I wish it was that exciting. Investigating might be a little too specific, though. We're barely even certain society exists at this point, you realize, despite what Cassius says. 
We're going to be wandering all across Liberal, keeping an eye out for anything resembling a secret society bent on world domination. This is probably not going to be the most exciting job ever, is the point. Well, I get it. I guess groping around in the dark is the best we can do right now, huh? So I'm guessing you want us to tag along. Yes, I'd like to assign the two of you to assist Sherazard and Agate. The plan is to have Shara and Agate investigate different areas separately. I would like for them to have a partner, though, just in case the society really is as dangerous as we think it is. Okay, so one of us helps Shara, and the other helps Agate? Exactly. Are you willing to assist? You bet we are. I was going to go looking for the society on my own anyway, so this is perfect. I want to help, too. There's no way I could just sit around when there's suspicious stuff going on. Thank you. I'm glad we have the help. Well then, the one remaining hurdle would be the team formation. I'll be fine with either of you, really. We all know each other, basically. You two figure out how it'll work out best. Well, of course you have to put, push the decision onto us. What do you think, Onlace? How should we do this? Well, this might be kind of irresponsible of me, but I think it might be best if you decide, Estelle. You've only been a full bracer for a little while, right? You probably haven't found your style as a bracer yet. So how about using this as a chance to see what kind of bracer you want to be? Huh, look at you, Onlace. When did you learn to talk like a professional? Huh, leave it to me. Anyway, girl's got a point. Sharon and I are the same rank, but the ways that we fight are different. I barely use arts except for support once in a while. I focus more on cutting things down with my sword. Well, I emphasize speed, range my whip, and horrible arts. You can't really go wrong with either of us, I think. Keep in mind that being a bracer involves much more than just fighting them. Think hard and choose a partner that, that you think matches you best. Well, uh, it really honestly doesn't matter who you choose, and the storyline is essentially exactly the same for who you choose, you just have different little mini-conversations, but there is one little scene that is much more funnier with Agit, so I'm going to choose him. Alright then, just keep in mind when you're a full bracer now, I ain't going to go easy on you, hope you're ready. Yeah, I know. I kind of thought you might say something macho like that. Come on now, starting off with an argument is probably not the best way to begin this trip. Anyway, that'll make Onlace and me the other team. I'm looking forward to seeing how, you, how your training turned out. Ha, <laughs> feels like forever since we worked together, Shara. So with that out of the way, the next step is figuring out how we're going to wander the country. Look for shadows. Any thoughts, Elman? Possibly. I would suggest beginning by going to help the regions with the busiest branches. In fact, I just received pleas for aid from the Ruan and Rulet branches today. Rather desperate sounding ones at that. That sounds lovely. I suppose I've been away from Rulet for too long. I'd best go help Ina. Yeah, I think that's for the best. It's been a while since I've seen Ina too. This'll be fun. We'll head to Ru Ruan then. You're cool with that, right, Estelle? Of course. Man, I wonder how everyone in Ruan is doing. I'll contact the branches ahead of your arrival. Be careful, everyone. Okay. We'll get a bit of an early start then. Estelle, you just gotten back too. I'm sorry we couldn't spend more time together. Me too. It sounds like Ina and Roland really need some help too, though. Be sure to say hi to everyone for me. You got it. Estelle, I'm sure you're fine, but don't fret yourself to loose ends, alright? Shara. My tarot tells me that the bond between you and Joshua has not been severed yet. So don't worry. Believe in your connection to him. Follow it, your show will be clear. I know it. Thanks, Shara. I feel a lot braver now. Come on now, don't make that face. You're a full brace, remember? Be proud of yourself. So, Estelle, guess this is goodbye for now, then. Onlace, thanks for going with me on my training. Shara asked you to come along with me, right? I've been found out like a pie thief in the night. Shara said having someone who didn't know Joshua too well around would help you sort out your feelings. So yeah, she asked me. Huh, thought so. Well, th don't tell her everything! Hey, what's wrong with being up front at this point, right? But the real truth is, it wasn't just that. I did want to train myself too. And I really do think I learned a lot by training with you, Estelle. So I've got to say it too. Thank you! And, uh... You know... I think this might be weird for saying this, but I'd like to think that we're already friends, but I'd like it if you and me, Estelle, if it became something more. What? <laughs> Are you saying what I think you're saying? No, don't try to st stop me, Shara. I'm serious. I'm actually sure about this. Serious? Oh, really? Right here in public? You've got to be freaking kidding me. Well, I know I'm a couple years older than you, Estelle. We've totally spent about the same amount of time with the guild, and you know what? Age doesn't matter when it comes to something like this. So, what do you think? Uh, uh, I'm really happy, and I think my heart is racing out of my chest, but this is kind of a surprise to say the least. 
Besides, there's uh, Joshua, and there's some kind of the issues in a couple of fronts, or more than a couple, or rather, I don't... Joshua? What does he have to do with this? And what problems would there be on a couple of fronts if we became rivals? Rivals? Yeah, yeah, we're about the same age, about equal in skill level. I thought it'd help us both try to reach even higher, but... You don't actually like the idea, do you? Oh, uh, that's what you meant. Okay. Unpredictable as always, I see. Not quite the punchline that I was expecting. Punchline? Well, if that's what you meant... Alright then. I, Selbright, hereby recognize you as my rival! Consider the gauntlet thrown in your face! Alright, a race to see which one of us can reach Agat and share his level first. Bring it on, sword brain. I'll leave you eating my bracer point dust. Ugh, I do believe we're in some amount of peril, my good Mr. Krosner. Eh, seriously. Nothing scarier than a couple of kids charging straight ahead. Okay, so then this airship's gonna head on out to uh, Roland. And we're stuck here. And no matter who you chose, it really wouldn't matter. You would still head to Ruan, and the other party would head to Relent. So don't think that, you know, you're doing the stuff out of order, because you're really not. It just depends on which character you want with you, and who has better dialogue. And I just feel like Agon has better dialogue. And I think that, I'm not going to say he's a better character, but he just fits my playstyle a bit more, which is pretty much just smash the crap out of things. <laughs> You know, don't get too complicated there. Okay, finish our check-in and wait for the next Ruan-bound flight? Yeah, the ship bound for Ruan ought to be get here soon enough. Sure you don't want to do some shopping or something? No, been a month. I wouldn't mind hitting the department store, but you sure you wouldn't mind a game? I'm easy, really. You guys just change into things without any planning, you see. Girls are the ones who actually really bother repairing and whatnot. I see you choose what you think is important. Well, to be honest, I can get what I need in Ruan. Let's just get our tickets. Works for me. Tickets should be sold in the lobby of the airship company building. Okay, well then let's go. Yeah, even if you wanted to head into town, you can't. You're screwed. You're just kind of stuck here. And these people really say nothing of importance, really, at all. They're just... Oh my god, shut up, you stupid kid. So let's just go on inside and buy our tickets. For another scene! Huh? What? Really? This is why I can't stand the pompous imperial nobility. And I thought there were limits to how unpleasant a single person could be. Ha! Huh, you took the words right from my mouth. Tell me, why does the Republic even care about the engine provision deal? I did not think liberals' internal politics were your plaything. It's a matter of national, no, international security, of course. It's only been a decade since Erebonia attempted to annex this innocent little country. It's absolutely unacceptable for a half-barbaric nation like yours to lay their hands on such cutting-edge technology. The Republic is a long-standing friend of Liberal, who won't stand back and allow something to threaten his interests. Long-standing friends? Some friends you are! You didn't send them so much as a soldier in the war! You just pretend to be allies when it suits you while standing back and do nothing when it doesn't! What did you just- My Lord Ambassador Karnak, may I suggest that we leave the matter here. We do not wish to bother the other customers. But Mueller, we- Ambassador Cochran, may I ask that you back down as well? This is a debate that can be handled just as well through the embassies. Very well. I can't say I like hearing that from a member from the Imperial military. Still, far better than hearing it from that pompous and gluttonous member of the nobility, I suppose. What did you- Well, gentlemen, if you'll pardon me. Huh. That insufferable she-wolf! This is why commoners with no history or tradition or- My lord. I shall return to the embassy. I trust I can leave the other matter in your hands. As you will, my lord. Uh, hiya! Uh, Estelle, yes? It's been some time since the martial arts competition, I believe. Huh, <laughs> glad you remember. That was one heck of an argument just now, though. Who were those two, and why were they going at each other like a cat and dog? The man was the ambassador of the Erebonian Empire to liberal Lord Davil Carnog. The woman would be the ambassador from the Republic of Calvar, Elsa Cochran. They head up their respective embassies here in the capital. Oh, I see. Awful damn childish for a couple of ambassadors. Can those two really do their jobs? I get... I wish I could disagree, honestly. To say that the Empire and the Republic have always been on bad terms would be an understatement at the best of times. And on top of that, those two are like oil and water on a personal level. 
Well, no. The fact that they break into an argument every time they meet shows how similar they are in some ways. I guess I can see that. Though maybe it's because I walked in the middle of a conversation, but I couldn't understand like half of that. Something about engine provision and liberals' internal politics? Uh, sorry, I guess I shouldn't ask. No, I don't mind. It's not really a secret anyway. The engine in question is actually the latest from your own central factory. Once the design is finalized, sampling units are likely to be provided by your airship company to the Empire and the Republic both, but... We bumped into Ambassador Cochran when we came by to finalize the details of the deal. I get it. So why the big argument about an engine, then? An orbital ship's engine is what determines what a ship can really do. Since you can install them in military ships, you usually don't just hand them out like candy. Oh, I get it. It'd be a real mess if that engine let the Imperial Army get all powered up. Uh, well, I mean... Not at all. It's true. Normally, sharing such advanced technology with other countries so freely would be unthinkable. But this is a part of your Queen's plan. Rather than monopolizing a technological edge, she wishes to provide it to other countries to promote multinational peace. At least, that's her plan as I understand it. I get it. She did mention something like that a while ago, now that I think about it. Uh, it's pretty incredible that the Queen is willing to try something like that. Like, it's not just an ideal, you know? It's something that could really change how people negotiate. Yes, you have a reason to be proud of your Queen, I'd say. My apologies. But this conversation has gone on longer than I'd intended. You're here for air tickets, yes? I'll pardon myself here. Say, Muller, about Oliver. Has he gone back to Erebonia already? What? Not her? I haven't really had a chance to see him since the Queen's birthday celebrations, actually. I felt kind of bad about that. But don't worry. That half was continuing to while away his days here in Liberal. He said he was going to visit Elmo Springs, if I remember right. Okay, then. Yeah, sounds like Oliver, all right. Should he ever bother returning to the embassy like a responsible citizen, unlikely as that is, I'll let him know that you're asking after him. I'll make sure he at least contacts you before he returns to the Empire. Thanks, Mueller. Hardly. I should thank you for keeping that lunatic company. Now, if you'll excuse me. Actually, it's the scenes with Oliver that I really chose, uh, Augit, so there you go. Mueller's the resident military officer for the Erebonian Embassy, I think. I've only ever met him a few times myself. Huh. Well, Bill, he made sure not to leave himself open at any port in our chat. Well-trained dog in the military. Hiding some sharp fangs to boot. There you go again. It does seem like he's really strong, though. I don't trust any Imperials, and that includes Blondie. It seems like he talked to Cassius about something, but who knows what his plan is? What was staying so long? I guess that's a good point. Although, Oliver may be weird, but I can't think of him as a bad guy. Even M Mueller doesn't seem all that malevolent, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Let's go over the counter and get our tickets. Man, finally, shut up. Okay. Two tickets for Ruan! Yeah, we're with the Bracer Guild. Go ahead and give us our tickets. They're free. Got it. Okay. Thank God. Okay, so we got those free from uh, Elnin. Then we got to extract the receptions. But before we do that, I want to buy the Liberal News issue 2, which I'm going to be showing in the end slate of this video. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to be showing... Um, the Liberal News and that other novel, what is it, like the Vampire Novel or something? Um, what is it called again? Let me look at my paper real quick. The Tapshupu Jack? I don't know. Here, let me look at it real quick just to figure out what it's called. It's not that big of a deal if I don't know what it's called, but, you know, it's the Gambler Jack! Yeah. So I've been doing that lately, and I'm gonna do that, um, continuing on. So let's get on, yeah, let's get on board. Okay, check in. Sweet. I am sure. Let's check in. Nobody here has anything of importance to say, and you cannot explore anywhere else but this one area. Everybody just talks about how they want to go fly away somewhere. It's really boring, to say the least. <laughs> So we're headed off to uh, Luan, which we went to in the first in, in the first uh, game. And some things to keep in mind is that Chloe is the princess of Luan. The royal family is the Vane Oslais family. And uh, yeah, there was some issues with mayors going on there, like some evil mayor. He burned down the orphanage and stuff like that. That all happened last game, so I'm not spoiling anything unless you didn't play the last game. But if you didn't play the last game, I really don't know why you're watching this. What a nice day! The tourists gotta be flooding the streets and water if the weather's like this there. 
maybe. They got bigger things heat to place up than tourism, though. Other than tourism, what do you mean? The election for the new mayor. Apparently there's two popular candidates to replace old Dalmore. So it's like an actual fight of an election? Neat. I'm thinking about it, I guess it's about time, huh? They can't just let the mayor's office sit empty. Yeah, the whole thing's been a bit of a mess ever since you guys blew that case wide open. I heard about what you guys did from Gene. Uh, well, yeah, after you left, me, Joshua, and Chloe worked on that. Well, we have some help from a reporter, too. And the actual arrest was done by Lieutenant Swartz of the Royal Guard. Even better, you're smart enough to see that it wasn't all just you. By Chloe, though, you mean the girl in the uniform, right? A.K.A. Princess Claudia? Man, that blew my frickin' mind when I heard that in the castle. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. You know, I haven't seen Chloe since the birthday festival. Or Oliver, I guess, for better or worse. And not just them, Tifa and Zane. I told Tifa and her old fogey about what was up with you. I figured they'd worry too much if they were kept in the dark. Uh, thanks, Saga. Yeah, well, you'd better send him a letter soon or meet with him in person or whatever. They miss you. Oh, and Zane went back to Calvert after the festival. He said to give you his best. See, I wish I could have said goodbye. As for the princess, I think I heard she was back in the Genus Academy. We'll be in Rouen for a while, so I think we can find some time to drop in and say hi at least. Yeah, you're right. What? Did I say something funny? Oh no, not really. I was just thinking. You're a lot more thoughtful than you look at it. You even offered to let me do some shopping before we left the capital. Thoughtful? I'm not. I mean, I am, but... Ugh, forget it. Whatever. I'm gonna go take a nap in my seat till we arrive. Don't get so absorbed in wandering around that you forget to get off of the lawn. Aga, you really do try too hard sometimes. Anyway, I think I'll take a device. Time for a bit of looking around before we arrive. Okay, and we'll look around and go exploring Ruan next time on Let's Play Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky 2nd Chapter. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day.